There are many different types of trees in computer science. Everything that is currently on the screen is a type of tree, despite the many variations. Binary search trees are distinguished by two important characteristics. For starters, they are a type of binary tree. This means that each node or vertex is limited to a maximum of two children. It is this ordering of data that is what distinguishes binary search trees from other types of binary trees. In binary search trees, the smaller of the two child nodes are placed to the left of the parent node, and the larger is placed to the right of the parent node. This will form a structure where the smallest node values will be found on the leftmost side of the tree, and the largest node values will be found on the rightmost side of the tree. These characteristics mean that binary search trees score pretty favourably on the time complexity chart. This is especially true in comparison to other relational data structures, such as linked list for example, which has a score of linear time. If we wanted to search through a linked list, then we would have to pass through each node sequentially. There is no choice of direction here, we are always going in the same direction. In the worst case scenario, the data that we want found is at the very end of the linked list. This means that the number of calculations we perform is solely determined by the length of the linked list. Hence a time complexity of O of N, where N represents the size of the linked list. As for binary search trees, however, they have a slightly better time complexity. That is because we have a choice of either going down one branch or the other. This is under the proviso that the binary search tree is balanced and not unbalanced. That is to say it looks like this, and not this. If we wanted 6, then we would start at 8, the root node. Since 6 is smaller than 8, we know to go towards the left. Now we are at 3. Well, 6 is greater than 3, so we need to go to the right. We do this and find that we have found the node that we are looking for. The n is still present in the big O notation for binary search trees. This is because the size of the binary search tree still has an impact on the scalability of our searches. The log is there to represent the fact that, unlike linear time data structures, the data in binary search trees is ordered in a way that enables us to search through it strategically, that is not as simple as just going through each node sequentially. The log aspect is what gives our binary search tree a better time complexity than many other kinds of trees, like linked list for example. In this tutorial, we will be using JavaScript to implement the lockup, insert and delete methods for binary search trees. So here we are in our IDE. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'll be using Repolit as my choice of text editor because it gives us easy access to the JavaScript console to the right. We will start off by creating the node class for the individual nodes that coalesce to form a completed binary search tree. It is not mandatory that we create them as a class. We could use JavaScript objects or a hash table to create them, but it is common practice to create them as a class in their own right, so that is what we will do here. With the node class out of the way, we will move on and create the binary search tree class, the class that is the main focus of this video. The only property that we have is this root property. It will hold the starting node, which is the singular uppermost node at the top of the tree. The first method will be the insert method. This method will take in a value as a parameter and use it to create a node that will hold this value parameter of our choosing. This newly created node will then be appended to the binary search tree in the correct location which is determined by the node's value. If there isn't already a root node on the tree, then the node that we have just created will become the root node. That will be the end of the method in this case, as signified by this return statement. We've ended the method here if this condition is met, because there's no point traversing the tree to find the correct position for the new node if there isn't even a tree to traverse in the first place. If you get to this point and the if condition hasn't been met, then that means there is a tree that we need to traverse to find the right position for our new node. This tree variable will hold the current node that we have just traversed onto. Since we haven't started the traversal process yet, it will be assigned the starting root node. The loop itself will be implemented via a while statement without a dynamic catch clause. That is because a binary search tree is not like an array where there is a set number of items for us to derive the length of a loop from. In this case, the loop will continue until a return keyword is met to signify the end of the method. If the value of our new node is less than the node that we are currently on, which is what will happen in this if statement, then inside we will do one of two things. One of those two things will happen if the node that we are currently on has no left child node. 
If this is the case, then we will insert our new node into that empty left child position. The method will then end because we have finished the insertion operation. If that is not the case, however, and the node that we are currently on does have a left child, then you will traverse onto that left child node, meaning that it will become the node getting evaluated against our new node's value on the next loop iteration. The first case, the one that will end the method, is here. If that isn't the case, then we will traverse onto that existent left child node, which is done here. Now, remember the golden rule for binary search trees. The smaller values are towards the left and larger values are towards the right. Therefore, if our value is not less than, then it must be greater than, as we cannot have duplicate values in this tree. So, in the else block, we will copy the same logic in the first if condition and change it so that it is relevant to the right side of the tree, not the left side. Finally, I will finish the method by adding a return statement so we can see the tree that we have created by appending a new node to it. I will now give you a demonstration. We will initialize a new object from the class and I will insert some values. So as you can see, it's currently an unbalanced binary search tree because the root node holds the value of three and then to its right, as you can see, it has the value of six and then to the right of that, there is another node which should be the value of 10. However, if we're going to change this to say one, for example, we should have a balanced tree, well, a more balanced tree, because the root node has its left node, which is one, and its right node, which is six. So that will look something like the diagram that's currently being displayed. Now that we have covered the insert method, the lookup method will feel like a breeze because it uses the same concept. Honestly, the real challenge in this video is the upcoming delete method. That is where things will get really complex. But don't worry because everything will be explained clearly with the aid of diagrams. So if the root property is uninitialized, then they definitely won't be finding their node of choice because there isn't a tree to search for in the first place. So we will return false to signify an unsuccessful lookup. As said before, we will create this tree variable. It will start off being the root node, but is soon likely to be assigned to a child node, allowing us to traverse down hierarchical levels of the tree. And as you can see, this while loop will last for as long as tree holds a value. That is because in the upcoming loop, we will not be checking to see if there is a left or right child. We will simply be assigning tree to that child, regardless of whether it exists or not. Therefore, a tree is uninitialized, then clearly we have run out of tree to traverse through, in which case the loop needs to stop and the user needs to know that the lookup has looked through the whole tree and has failed to find a match. And to tell the user this, we will write this return false boolean below the while loop. It will only be reached if the while loop ends without returning a value, in which case we will return false. These two if conditions Check to see if the node held in tree has a value that is either greater than or less than our chosen value. If that is the case, then there is clearly no match. So if either of these cases are met, then we will traverse down the tree, accessing either the right or left child of the node that is currently held in tree based on which case was met. If there was a match, then we will simply return whatever node tree is because that is the node where the match occurred on. Again, I will show you a quick demonstration of this. So we will say tree.lookup and your lookup was six. Again, demonstration doesn't really matter because you can do this on your own. As you can see, okay, we're gonna have to, as you can see, it has given us the node with the value of six. It doesn't have any children, but yeah, that clearly is the node. Okay, so I hope that things haven't been too hard for you thus far because we have reached the most difficult part of the video. We are now going to implement the remove method to remove a node from the tree. As you can imagine, the difficulty of removing a node from a tree is heavily dependent on where the node that we want to remove is currently positioned in the tree. Based on the node's position, this operation could either be really easy or really hard. Take, for example, us removing one of the leaf nodes at the end of a tree. Since these leaf nodes don't have any children, things will be pretty simple. All we need to do is pop off that node from the end of the tree without the hassle of reorganizing other nodes around the deleted node to seal the gap in the tree created from deleting the node. And it is this what makes deleting nodes from a tree extremely difficult in certain scenarios. We are going to cover them however, so don't worry, we will take it one step at a time. Again, this remove operation cannot be performed if there is no tree to begin with. 
We will hold two variables instead of the one that we worked with in the previous two methods. The current node will be like the previous node. It is simply the node that we are currently on and evaluating for deletion. The parent node is the parent node of the current node. It is currently set to null because the current node is currently the root node and the root node is not meant to have any parent nodes, which is the defining characteristic of the root node. As for the while loop, it will run for as long as the current node is initialized and we still have a tree to search through. So this is the traversal process. As you can see, it is not too complex in light of what we had learned previously. If the value of the node that we are looking through is less than the current node, then you will access the current node's left child. When this happens, current node will be assigned to this left child, but not before the parent node is assigned to the current node, which is now going to become the child node of the newly assigned parent node. As said before, the logic is the same for the right side, only that the right child node is accessed instead. This third else block will be called if we have found a match. It is here where we will be handling the complex logic. That is because if the code inside of here is called, then that means you have found a match and current node needs to be deleted because of it. The first case is the easiest. It is when the current node has no right child, only a left child. This is easy because it means that this left child can simply be moved up to replace its parent node, which has just been deleted. There's no hassle over where any of the other nodes will go. This if condition here will only be met if we have chosen the root node for deletion, because that is the only one that does not have a parent node. As for the else block, both of these conditions involve the left child of the current node moving up to replace the former position of the current node. The differing factor between them is whether the value held by this left child node is greater than or less than the parent node of the former position of current node. This factor will actually determine whether the current node itself was a right child or left child of the parent node. That is because current node's left child will need to be moved up to replace current node and to do this we will need to know the correct side that current node was on previously so we can replace it with its left child. The next condition is not too dissimilar to the first actually. It will arise if the node that we need to delete has a right child but that right child node does not have a left child node. If this is the case then we will need to move the left child of the current node to fill the empty slot which is the lack of a left child on the right child of the current node. This will move all of the nodes out of the way allowing us to slot the right child node with its newly moved left child node onto the parent node on either the right or left side depending on its value which will also be dependent on whether the former current node was on the right or left side of the parent node in the first place. Lastly comes the most complicated scenario that is if there is a left child on the right child of the current node. The first thing that we will do is find the leftmost child on the right child to do this, we will create a sort of mini tree subsection within a tree. We declare the right child of the current node to be stored in the leftmost parent variable, and the left child of this to be stored in the leftmost variable. Although the leftmost parent variable is not included in the declaration of this leftmost variable, this is essentially what is going on. By the time the while loop is finished, the leftmost parent variable will be assigned the leftmost node of this mini tree which we have decided starts from the right child node of the current node, which we matched up with our selected value and so on deleted. The leftmost parent variable will also follow suit and be assigned the parent of this leftmost child node of the mini tree that we have siphoned off from the main one. To seal up the gap created by deleting the current node, we need the leftmost child node of the right child node of the current node to take the position of the missing current node. To do this we will first assign the right child node of the leftmost node to be the left child of the leftmost parent node. In this animation, the node that is being assigned to the left of the leftmost parent will be node 44. To get the leftmost node connected up with the tree in the same position that the current node used to be in, we will need to connect it to the right and leftmost children that the current node used to have. As you can see from the animation, we are getting the leftmost node, 38, connected with the nodes that the now deleted node 30 used to be connected to. 
Finally, the leftmost node will replace the current node on the side that the current node used to be on. Notice that we don't do anything with the leftmost parent node here. That is because we have done everything that we needed to do with it when we moved the right node child from the leftmost node to the leftmost parent node. We did this because we needed the leftmost node on its own without any children so that it can take on the children of the previous current node that has been deleted when it moves in to take its place. Again, this is really complicated, I can't stress that enough, and because of that it is quite hard to articulate what is going on in plain words. I hope that the animations helped you, but if you have any questions then please don't hesitate to ask me in the comments box below. I will try and answer any questions that you might have to the best of my ability. But I will finish up this else if, as you can see, this one here, the matching one. I will finish that by returning true. That is because we have successfully found a match and we have deleted the node that matched up with the value that we wanted to delete. It also looks like I'm missing a semicolon here, so I'll just add that there to remove these errors. I'll say tree dot remove, and then I'll say six, I'll remove node six, and so I can see the result. I'll say console.log tree, and hopefully, we'll pray. And yeah, we can see that node six has actually been removed, and you can test this yourself, because obviously there are different scenarios. But I can assure you that it does in fact work. And we now reach the end of the video. I hope that you enjoyed it and learned something new. You would also be doing me a huge favour if you liked and subscribed. I would really appreciate any help that you can give me. Anyway, look after yourself guys and peace.